Welcome back, everyone. How's it going? How's it going? Take your heal potion with you for the day. We got our alchemy lab behind us here. We've already done all the intro stuff, but of course the, the mic was muted. <laughs> How was everyone's weekend? Hopefully it was good. Hopefully everyone got to enjoy some of the nice weather we had. We got our second shed all cleaned out, all organized and everything. So that's pretty nice. And today we're just relaxing now. Because the little guy stayed with his dad. That's kind of nice. Gets the extra day. We miss him though. <laughs> we always miss him when he's gone. All right, so without further ado, we're going to do some character creation here, okay? Um, I wanted to do this as also um, a video to break up into a YouTube video uh, moving forward um, because I know that there is a new system on uh, Ultima Online Renaissance and I don't believe there's any coverage on YouTube or anything about it. So I would like to do a little bit of coverage about uh, the Oklo Island, the new player system and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I will not be able to access the, uh, the new player system myself, um, but I'll kind of talk about it and reference it as I'm playing, um, the different ways it works and stuff like that. So without further ado here, let's get into some, some character creation, shall we? So essentially what I'm going to be working on mainly here is um, I think probably the easiest way to start off on the server and in terms of uh, money is probably like a, a Provo warrior or a Provo uh, mage. So we're going to do something, something like that here with our character. have a mohawk this guy's gonna look funny yeah there we go um what do we want to name our character here folks what do we want to name our character here let's get something funny on the way here um yeah i don't know what do we want to name our character um a lot of the times I'll just look around the room and think of different combinations of things that I see and stuff like that. Like I have a whole bunch of Star Fox toys up there. Uh, Iron Man, we can name him Tony Stark. Or you know what? Yeah, we're gonna make, we're actually gonna change this up a little bit here. We're gonna make Tony Stark. All right, and we gotta have him in red and red as he's flipping Iron Man, <laughs> right? If we're gonna make uh, if we're gonna make Iron Man, we might as well have him in red, right? Okay, so and then hair color is going to be we want like black. Facial hair color is black. Okay, I think we got our Tony Stark character here. Okay. Let's move her on in. Okay, so advanced. Now here's here's the tricky part because we know kind of where we want the character to end up. But in terms of best starting skills, it can be tricky. Um, I usually start with something kind of like uh, 50 Majory and maybe 50, um, 50 Provoke. Try and work, try and start with the skills that might be a little bit harder to uh, to build up or to uh, to purchase or to like to invest in because majory is gonna cost money, right? Um, so it's always a good one to start off with in my opinion. And then the second skill is kind of a little bit, you know, more personal. Um, in this case here, I think I'm actually gonna start him with mace fighting. Uh, the reason why I'm choosing mace fighting for this character is 
there's a lot of extra um, decent maces around to be purchased um, for PVM purposes because both swords and fencing is the heavy favorite on UOR in terms of PvP weapons. So I find there's a lot better macing weapons around um, to be purchased cheap than fencing and swords weapons. So if you're making a character to start off, that might be a benefit to you. So you might want to consider that. And then the third skill is pretty, pretty up to you. Usually what I do is I'll pick healing and put a couple of skill points into healing um, just to get the uh, new bead scissors because I find that's probably one of the most useful items in the game. Um, for cutting up leather, uh, you know, for cutting up bandages, stuff like that, right? So this is what our template is going to be starting off. Um, I always like to start off with higher dexterity as well. Because there's nothing worse than running into a character on this server uh, with low dexterity and then not being able to, like, run or something like that. So I always try and start off with at least 20 or at least 15 dexterity. Um, at least a couple points above the minimum because I think it's if I'm not mistaken 10 points to run through someone So if you have 10 points of dexterity, you actually have to wait for your decks to go back up to continue moving again So just a little helpful tip there <clears throat> All right, so I think we've got our character built here um, And then once we go into town, what we'll do is we will train up our healing All right, and then once we make a tiny bit more money um, what we'll do is we will uh, we'll get our um, uh, we'll get our other skills built up and stuff like that. We'll get our provoke built up. We'll get our musicianship built up. Get a couple of instruments and stuff like that. I'm gonna try and do this like as naturalist as I can, um, just because in terms of like other people starting and stuff like that, it's not really fair if I start throwing cash at this character which a lot of newer characters wouldn't be able to do um, so I'm going to do this character as a naturalist character to start off um, just to make it you know a little bit more realistic I just want like two points in it there okay and then we'll buy it up the rest of the way I hope that starts me off with the, the healing scissors. It should, anyways. Alright, um... I'll start in Scare, just because I know where the cotton fields are from there. Oh! Oh, the scary, the scary UO music. One second here, folks. Let me turn that off here. Okay, so also two helpful tips for people starting out. Um, you're going to want to use the world map. So up here, you have essentially like a, a quick access uh, little heads up menu here. So click on the world map. Okay, the world map will bring up essentially a map almost the same as UOAM. Um, so for anyone getting started and stuff like that uh, and wondering why there's no integration between uh, UOR and UOAM, uh, apparently UOAM does not work very well with the UO Classic client, which again is this client here. Um, just to show you the launcher here real quick. Um, when you bring up the launcher, because I couldn't find this at first myself, when you bring up the UOR launcher, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on options to use the newer client. Go down here and then click on uh, use classic UO client, um, which is essentially like the one where you can resize your game window like you see me doing here. Um, you can play around with uh, different counters here like this is the one that I use. Um, so essentially what you want to do is because also to classic client doesn't have if you notice up here the old um, the old heads up display for keeping track of your uh, different items and stuff like that. So what you want to do is is come into options, go to the counters uh, sub tab, 
and then click on your different options here. And then essentially what this will do is it will set you up with a counters bar, very similar to the old uh, Razer heads up display up top here, which will track your different items. And all you have to do is drop the different items into this uh, bar here. And as you can see here, you can configure it in any different uh, um, row and column configuration you want so just click on the different options set it up the way you want and then you've got your uh, new heads up display set up at the bottom and this one's nice too because you can move it around um, wherever you want as well so do that apply okay and then also too i like the info bar as well um, i just personally find the standard one um, good enough i'm sure other people might want to add other things but the info bar you can just throw below here and that will just show, show you things um, numerically things like your weight um, stamina mana hits and then you know your notoriety through blue gray you know red whatever 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 right all right so let's continue on here let's go pick some cotton here real quick um, oh sweet okay it did start us off with newbie newbie scissors perfect and then on this server, it will start you off with a thousand bandages, okay? Or sorry, a thousand gold. Um, you can use that gold towards uh, some gear, uh, maybe building up some skills and stuff like that. That's probably what I would use it for. Because I mean, gear is going to be relatively easy to find. So I suggest going and using uh, the money to build up some skills and stuff like that. Now I gotta remember which field out here is the uh, the cotton field. Okay, and this is one of the differences here between a new player and a player that is established on the server. So when you start as a new player, you're going to have the option of going into young status, which is going to give you the option to automatically be tele teleported into Oklo, which is the new player island. Um, that is the island here you know what i'm going to show you here real quick just by flipping over to another character okay so when you start off you're going to start off in oaklo this is the new player bank area here um this is the moon gate here and then just southeast of the bank and moon gate is the the cotton fields okay so as a new player you're going to want to come down here because these cotton fields are much better than most of the other ones in the game these respawn really super quick um, so come down here uh, pick as much cotton as you can to start being able to build up and macro your your healing um, and all your cloth skills right i just wanted to show that real quick because it'll be a little bit before i'm able to go there with uh, the other character okay so back to Tony Stark. Okay. All right. I just want to pick some cotton here real quick. And again, like I was just saying, what you would want to do is you would want to go to the actual cotton fields in Oklo, pick the cotton there, um, because for one, you're going to get a lot more cotton. Like for an example, like look at how much cotton's here, right? Uh, you're going to get a lot more cotton there, so make sure you go there as a new player. Whereas I'm just going to pick some cotton really quick to show you actually how to, to you know, uh, to weave the cotton just in case you don't know how to do it. So go back into town here. All right. And then from there, we'll try and get back to Oaklo because it's going to make more sense if I'm in the area that you guys will be starting. The only thing is, uh, only new players can pick Oklo Cotton uh, to keep veterans away from just raiding it. Um, so I just wanted to pick some cotton out here just to be able to show you what you have to do with it once you've picked it. And to cross the boats at uh, Scare here, all you have to do is say uh, cross. Oh, we got a little fisherman here. Hello. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go to the tailor here. All right. So at the tailor, what you wanna do is, with your bales of cotton here, okay? You wanna double click them, click
click on the spinning wheel here, okay? What that's gonna do is it's gonna create uh, these spools of thread, okay? You can create a macro for this as well. I just have, you know, only a, I only have a few myself, so I'm not gonna worry about creating a macro, but normally I would uh, macro this out, all right? And then we're all done here. We've got the spools of thread, okay? Then once you have the spools of thread, what you wanna do is you wanna come over to the loom, double click them, and then use them on the loom. Every five, uh, every five spools of thread will be a bolt of cloth. But in our case, I guess there was one already on the loom, um, so that helped us out there. We just had to put one on at the beginning. So we'll use up our all our uh, thread here. All right, cool. So now we have 200 cloth. And then once you have the cloth, what you would do is use the scissors on it, cut it up once, makes it into cut cloth, and then two makes it into bandages, okay? So normally you'd want to cut that into the bandages. Uh, in our case here, I'm going to put the new bead bandages in our bank first because I'm not sure if it's going to add the stacks together, and that will make it so the, uh, the other bandages aren't noobified anymore. And... Word of the wise, new beat items are really super important. Um, I'm pretty sure as a new player, I believe you might keep your items in your bag. So some of the stuff might be irrelevant, but again, just uh, this will help out in the future. So throw that in there, cut these up, and then you've got extra bandages, right? And then this here is now a new bead pile of bandages. So you want to keep that separate from all your other bandages. So if you were to keep that in your bag, um, you'd have bandages uh, for after you die, which is really super helpful, right? Because then you can get back up to full health um, in case you die out in the wilderness or whatnot. So keep those separate separate from all your other bandages. And also too, keep them in your main pack. Uh, any new bead or bless items have to be in your main pack. If they're in a sub backpack, like if I put them in this bag here, they will no longer be newbied. So, word of the wise, any newbied items, boats, anything like that, you have to keep in your main bag. You can't have them in the sub bag. All right. So now we're going to make our way to Oklo just so you guys can kind of see the new player dungeon and stuff like that. So by using the moon gate here, north of town, we can pretty much get to anywhere in the open world. Um, but we're going to choose Oklo because, like I said, that's where most new players will and should start off. So we're going to teleport there. Hmm. One thing I might um, get for my character here, just for ease of use, is I might throw over a... A higher end spell book. That's the one thing I'm gonna do here, folks. So, and that's just to give me a bit of a boost because that's gonna take me like a lot of time to like get to that point where I'd be able to buy a spell. And this one isn't completely full. Um, so, I do apologize for that little bit of like a boost there. Um, but at least that way, when I go into the dungeon, I can at least take care of myself. Because again, like I won't be protected by the new player system. Whereas anyone in the new player system won't have to worry about being aggroed by things automatically. Whereas I will be aggroed automatically. All right. So again, pull up your different um, abilities and stuff like that. What I'll try and do is I'll try and do... Um, like I'll try and keep my new player stuff separate. So then you guys can kind of tell what you guys could use and stuff. So I've got heal and cure. You've got strength and stuff like that. Fireball, poison. Fire field. Teleport. Crater heal, lightning. The one spell I was looking for mainly was uh, blade spirit. So Blade Spirit is going to be separate. You guys won't have Blade Spirit. That's probably the only spell I'm really looking for. 
in terms of buying it, if I'm not mistaken, you guys could just go to the uh, the maze shop and just purchase it that way, right? Um, but without further ado, let's go into the dungeon here. Let's do some fighting. Oh, the other thing too is, uh, that's really annoying if you want to turn it off, because right now it's set to, you have to hold tab. If you go into options, combat spells, and then click hold tab key for combat, and then apply, what that does is now it'll toggle it. So all you have to do is press tab and it will keep the combat uh, set on. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is UOR. So this is completely free to download, completely free to play. Um, the nice thing with this too is, um, Chromic is, or cr sorry, cr uh, cr how would you pronounce that? <laughs> Comric? Comric? Um, Comric, this is really nice too because it's a relatively old MMO. Um, so this will run on virtually any system. So you could run this on even um, viewers have been telling me they've been playing on mobile devices. So you could play it on a phone, Android. Um, I believe Android's the only mobile device you can play it on. So you can play it on a phone or a tablet if you want. And actually, I just saw a troll up here. Let's go try and take out this troll actually. So that's the thing with this game too. It's a lot of it is kind of finding out and figuring things out and stuff like that. Um, what you can do, what you can't do and stuff like that. So we're going to try and take out a troll here. <laughs> we probably won't be able to take it out actually because I haven't trained any of my skills yet. We didn't go into town and actually buy up our skills, which I probably should do. Yeah, this is uh, Ultima Online Renaissance. <coughs> Alright, so I'm going to buy up some skills here. We're going to buy up uh, Provoke and Music, which are the two, the two main skills we'll use on the side here. And then we'll actually go into the dungeon here too, because I think the dungeon's a little bit more fun too. Oh, guards on high alert. I'm a vet player also. I usually hang out on UO forever. Great to see you teaching new players the great game. Oh, that's the thing, uh, Comric. Like, I find right now there's a lot of people, like, either trying out Ultima Online for the first time or coming back after years. And it's funny the things you either remember, <coughs> remember, don't remember. It's really funny that way. So I'm trying to create this video and then what I'll do is I'll upload it to YouTube probably snip it a little bit too um, so then also two people coming to Ultima Online Renaissance kind of have an idea of you know a good way to get started into the game as well um, because that's the one thing vets seem to forget how you know lack of hand holdy this game is right um, it's not like newer MMOs where you jump in and it's like you know kill five sewer rats for you here's your new broadsword of power you know go kill you know, go kill skeletons with your new broad sort of power because skeletons are harder to kill than rat. Like, there's no tier system to it, right? There's no quest system to it. So everything is kind of trial and error for the most part. Um, so in a lot of cases, you know, if people aren't figuring out or whatnot, I feel like hopefully they can go to this video and maybe figure some things out. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to buy a couple of instruments here, okay? Um, probably only like maybe one or two. Because um, again, we're trying to play this character as naturalist as we can, and I don't want to start wasting my money here. Um, oh, thank you so much, Gomrick, for the follow. Always appreciate that. Oh, and on that note too, um, we've got our new alchemist lab behind us. So um, make sure that you take a healing potion with you. All right? <laughs> all new followers get a healing potion, of course, right? <laughs> hey, Clean, thank you so much for notifying. Always appreciate that. <laughs> Hopefully you'll have fun in the uh, the spiritually initiated community here. We're always having fun here, playing some Ultima, playing Overwatch, playing all these fun games. Okay, and then for new players as well, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that when you come to the uh, the Bard Trainer here, that everything is text-based. So you'll come up to Kirsty here. Kirsty, it's Kirsty. Uh, there's actually an R before and after the I. <laughs> Kristy. Um, How I Met Your Mother reference. <laughs> um, okay. 
So Christy teach. Okay. So if you say Christy teach, what that's going to do is she'll give you a text-based list of all the different things that she's capable of teaching you. Okay. So on this character here, what we're going to want to teach is music and provoke. Okay. So all we're going to do is Christy teach provoke. Okay. She's going to tell you an amount of gold that you have to drop on top of her head, her body, you know, her avatar. So 243 is the max that she can teach you or the max she's capable of giving to you, right? In that case there, 243 gold got me 25 skill points. So now I can go out into the world and actually like try and use the provoke skill um, to, uh, to get monsters to fight one another and try and provoke them to fight each other, right? Try and entice them to, to fight. And then we also have to teach music. So we type in Christy teach music. Drop 278 gold on her head this time. Hopefully she's going to teach us a little bit more this time. Yep, 29.1 skill points this time. Okay, so now we might be able to actually use this skill to actually provoke some stuff in the open world. Okay, um, and then what we'll do too is uh, we will go here and we'll go to macros okay provoke um oh, we're not going to set a, a macro actually this time we're just going to set a a hotkey provocation is now going to be alt o oh. so every time that i click alt o it's going to use the skill okay so what instrument do you want to play? I want to play the loot that I just bought. And then it's going to ask me who do I want to entice or incite, sorry. Um, so in this case here, I don't have targets yet. So we'll go into the new player dungeon here and I'll show you. Actually, you know what? We'll do a rat and a chicken. We'll make a rat and a chicken try and fight. Okay. So what you do is, again, we'll click our hotkey, Alt-O. Click the chicken, all right, and the rat because we pulled up their, their health bars. And that makes them try and fight. Oh. They're too far away for me to try and make them fight. All right. All right. Well, there was no success. So our skill is too low to try and do things like that yet. <laughs> but that's one of the things you can try and do. So later what I'll do is actually um, I'll show you how to at least just uh, create the macro here since we're already on the provoke mindset here. Um, one second here. Okay. So we'll go back to our macros bar here, okay? In our case here, we already have the macro built. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll actually re-record it here to show you guys how to uh, create this macro. Okay, so what you wanna do is on Razor, this is your little, uh, kind of like the the sidekick for Ultima Online. This is gonna help you play the game and everything like that. Um, if you go to the macros sub tab, and click on actions and then record what you can do is you can set up uh, macros to just repeat themselves so in this case here what we're going to do is we're going to set this macro uh, to record us provoking the chicken onto the rat right and then after we've done that we'll click stop okay what i like to do is i like to add in the action of double clicking on the loot as well because what that does is is after a while of using the loot the loot's going to break um from wear and tear so by uh by setting up the macro to double click on the loot once the loot breaks if you notice earlier um when i started the provoke um skill it asked me what instrument i want to use i clicked on the loot to use the the loot as my instrument later in the macro when the loot breaks if you set the macro to double click a loot double click and then also double click it and convert to double click by type. What that'll do is, is during the macro, if your loot breaks, uh, the macro will be looping over, right? And what will happen is the, the cursor will come up for the, uh, for the new weapon or the, sorry, the new instrument to be selected. All you're going to want to do is double click the loot, put it in your macro, and then that will automatically have the macro choose the new loot whenever one breaks. So that's really helpful that way. Um, yeah, essentially, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? Uh, have your have your butt handed to you in game in a lot of cases. But it's it's fun that way, though, right? Like, you know, it's it's very 
it's very you know like guinea piggy that way i i kind of enjoy it that way because like i said with with me it's been so long that i've just gone out into the world and just started playing without you know macroing up skills and everything first um you know kind of kind of buying my way up into the game and stuff like that because of my knowledge base right um so i didn't even know what a troll was capable of against a new player clearly quite a bit <laughs> shouldn't be trying to take out trolls but it's fun to try right um okay and then back to the macro here uh so now that we've got the macro pretty much set up here after it's done what you're going to want to do is i like to set a pause of 12 seconds 12 seconds is pretty much the the minimum amount of time that the skill has to reset okay and also too um if you notice here it's in milliseconds so it's going to be 12 thousand milliseconds to get 12 seconds on your macro okay also too what i like to do is i don't like to use the wait for targets i always try and replace those with uh pause fours the wait for targets i find just have timeouts and then they slow down your macro um so i usually replace them with a quick uh pause for 0.5 seconds okay so then we go and then you're going to want to click loop at the bottom okay uh also too if if your targets ever die because in this case here i'm just showing you the really quick method of doing this i'll show you how to actually set it up in a second here um actually you know what i'll show you properly here down in the dungeon because this is where you're going to want to go as the new player okay so come into the dungeon as soon as you come into the dungeon take these corners here all right there's a little spot over here where there's actually going to be some creatures in essentially almost like a pen okay so you notice here people are already here provoking them what you can do is by sitting here you can use these monsters and macro your way up okay so in this case here we'll go back to our macro we'll reset the absolute target so we'll retarget them so right click on the absolute target retarget okay you're going to want to click on the lizard man okay as one target and then you're going to want to click on the troll as the second target okay that's going to set your absolute targets then what you're going to want to do is bam click play what that's going to do is is every 12 seconds it's just going to loop the provoke skill all right and then by looping the provoke skill it's going to test it and try and use it every 12 seconds which is hopefully going to start gaining you skill okay um by you know a couple hours in you'll probably have you know 30 40 50 60 points whatever built up and you can probably actually start using on some creatures and stuff for the sake of this video i'm not going to sit here uh, macroing right now um but that's what you would do in your case to build up your character in case you want to build him up before just going into the world and just you know hardballing it right <laughs> and thank you so much uh zjc90 always appreciate the follows thank you for being thank you for being part of the spiritually initiated community here um we're doing something a little bit different than like our normal streams here normally i'd be doing some like normal farming um maybe some treasure map content or something but i feel like this video is really really important right now because there seems to be an influx of new players coming to ultima online renaissance it's very different than a lot of the other player run shards um so i wanted to make sure i did this video just to try and help some people out and there's also a new player island which is now available on renaissance which i don't believe has any like video coverage or anything so i'm just trying to showcase that as well and kind of show players where they can go where they can build up some new skills stuff like that right um, and this video will be on YouTube. I'm going to try and um, section it off in YouTube and clip it out and stuff. So it's a little bit more, you know, like, like proper and set up and stuff like that. But uh, stick with me and stuff like that, folks. Oh, hey, all the best. <laughs> all the best, Comric. All the best. Hopefully see you in the future too, mate. I'm sorry I missed that message earlier there. Yeah, it's always fun setting up a new character too. I always like character creation in this game. That's like one of my favorite things to do is setting up new characters, um, like figuring out new builds and stuff like that, um, new ways to kind of fit skills in and stuff. It's it's super fun. And even last night, uh, just kind of out of context here, um, I got to do one one event that was 
the most fun I have had in Ultima Online since I've started playing Ultima, pretty much. It was car called a hard mode hunt. Um, and essentially, uh, you start, like, you can use a developed character, but everyone has to start off with an empty pack. And then you just get kind of, like, gated into the world. By progressing through the newbie dungeon, through, like, different content, you, like, have to go back to, like, town and purchase items. Um, it's hard to explain, but my video from yesterday does show the content, um, and I'll be releasing that as well on YouTube. Um, it was so much fun, so much fun. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to do a narration over top of it because I just did a screen capture for it, but by far the most fun I've had in Ultima Online. And thank you, Keza, for putting on that event. Um, really super fun. <laughs> Yeah, Stack, this, this server is popping off pretty well. We have the full, like, old-school faction system um, going. So, in place, like, there's sigil stealing, um, town control, um, like, proper proper factions for, you know, pre-Tremel and stuff like that. Um, generally, like, I mean, it, it's ramping up because it is a newly developed system with new bases for each faction. Um so it, it's ramping up what i always suggest is if you're a pvp -er, there's a pvp channel on the discord also to go out and steal a sigil if you, if you put it this way if you're stealing sigils in the factions you're gonna get action <laughs> you're gonna get action <laughs> i'm not much of a pvp -er myself but it's certainly available here and it is pretty pretty amped up i i mean i'm always i'm always trying to like do uh video coverage and stuff on it just running around following them and stuff having a blast just watching and stuff but it, it's amping up pretty quick okay so now that we've seen how to do the uh provoke area okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna run on a little bit here okay and i'll just show you the different areas of the dungeon here all right so down here We've got a secondary area, okay? The Oaklo dungeon is actually pretty decent. Um, you can find almost everything in this dungeon. Like anything, a, a, you know, a newer player should be fighting up to about drakes and stuff like that. So you can, again, you can find like earth elementals. Um, you can find pretty much everything down here. And some of this stuff, like I said, is pretty decent money too, right? Are you a big PVP or stack? This is like, that's the thing too, right? Like this is like pre-tremel, uh, like period piece, uh, fa like faction time stuff and everything. Oh, okay. So just for point of reference, this is the secondary provoke pit down here. Um, if you're not a new player, like, like myself, and you have the chance to be attacked by creatures and stuff, I might suggest coming down to this one here because nothing really spawns in this general area here. So this is probably a, a better provoke pit to come to um, if you don't have the young player status because as a non-young, I can get attacked by the creatures openly. As a young player, you have to actually, you have to actively aggress on a target to have them attack you. So it's a little bit more helpful um to be on the the second floor here if you don't have that and then i'm just going to show off down here hopefully don't aggro that gazer oh no we're gonna pull it all right oh and he's just gonna start tallying on me perfect <laughs> what does aggro everything in the whole dungeon here so this is pretty much it down here for that area um and then again you've got some uh what are they the brigands down here and stuff like that, that you can kill um which are pretty decent money right and then you've got different areas you can go to here in the Oklo dungeon. So this, if I'm not mistaken, is like the, uh, kind of like a, I guess almost like a graveyard area, like the undead area. It's pretty cool. And just for point of reference, like this is the most customed area pretty much on like the whole shard. Um, for the most part, this shard is very like true to times period. Um, that's one of the reasons why you know i play here and enjoy playing here oh that's pretty cool yeah so that's the that's the way how you get down there um so this is oklo island itself here folks as i was saying earlier as a new player what you'd want to do is you'd want to start off by running south and just picking cotton right um i can't pick the cotton unfortunately because i'm not a new player um but that's what you'd want to do as a new player all right
And then also two. You have your bower down here. You've got your inns over here in the southeast part of town. The tailor shop is right here. So this is where you would come with your cotton, okay? To spin it and to loom it, all right? Oh, and just for point of reference, uh, tailoring is very easy to build up on this server. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty lucrative too because there's the BOD system on this shard. Uh, so if you get into BODs, there's some pretty decent rewards. Clothing, blessed deeds, um, mask dyes, which are really rare and sell for a lot of money. There's good money in the BOD system. All right. And then also too, you've got some vendors on this side of town. One of my favorite vendors is this one up here for newer players and stuff like that. And then also too, you've got the ruin library right here as well. Oh, he's a big fan. And as you can see, it's pretty well, pretty well populated. Pretty much everywhere you go, you're going to find players and stuff like that. Um, it's not a shrunk world. This is the regular Ultima Online world with T2A. Uh, that's that's it. The Lost Lands and then the regular, uh, the regular lands. All right. Then we'll go back into the dungeon here. Just to show that back off again here. And even as a, uh, if you're still here, Stack, um, what I always suggest too is, is I mean, I, I always suggest too, if you, like if you're a PvPer, um, I mean myself, I would have like characters built like everywhere and stuff like that just to go wherever the PvP was. I mean, depending, I guess, on, you know, your, like your mindset on what type of PvP you're looking for or what, um, like what play style you're looking for in terms of uh, like mechanics and stuff like that. But I know myself, like, I would have a PvP character built everywhere. And, oh, these are definitely too hard for me to take out at this point. I always forget because I'm not a new player that I, I aggro, like, everything. Um, that's one thing about this shard, too. It's very super, like, new player friendly in terms of, like, people helping out and stuff like that. Um, a lot of new players, especially, like, PvPers, are very inclined to, like, help out new, VP, new PvPers get established because they're always looking for more action and stuff they want more players and stuff um and now that the faction system is starting to ramp up i mean more players are starting to come um and help out other people joining up and stuff like that right so it's really helpful that way yeah it's been a while since like i said that i've just ran out and not macroed up a character first and like actually built up the character before like coming into the open world it's a little bit different <laughs> especially in terms of money and stuff like that too right but like i said i wanted to kind of play this character like as naturalist as i can so then people can kind of see like what to do and stuff like that in the open world what would be great is if i found a platinum coin on one of these characters so platinum coins on this shard are the uh kind of the in-game currency and they're worth a lot of gold. So I'd get like 6,000 gold. Uh, what I'm doing right now is on containers, I'm just setting it to double click. So when you double click something, it loots it automatically into your bag. Uh, let's go off and heal for a second here. That's the other thing too. It's going to be tricky for me too, because like I said, I picked kind of like weird skills and stuff. Oh, you know what? I completely forgot to train up healing in town. I didn't start with actual healing. One second here. That's one skill I forgot I was going to buy up. Where did my music go? So we'll run south here to the healers. And then actually get healing trained up here. Gerda. Good old Gerda. Get Gerda to train us up. Alright. 
for the train healing. 265. Oh. All right. So now can we actually heal ourselves? Yeah, we can heal ourselves now. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully. It's not gonna do it's not gonna do very much because we don't have anatomy built up but that's fine at least we might actually be able to heal some damage maybe here and there oh no i definitely understand that one stack no that's why i made the point of just saying like um in terms of like getting stuff and things like that like i'm playing this character very like naturalist um, but I mean, normally, like, even if I was to walk into town and stuff like that and be like, Hey, is someone able to help me out with some startup gold? Someone would normally give you five, 10 K or whatnot, get you started out that way. You can build up some skills, build up some stats and just start macroing is the main thing, right? Like even just macroing up characters. That's the other thing too. I'm trying not to just macro because I don't want to just soak up time. I'm just trying to create like a quick, like, um, like a video to highlight different areas of the new player um, island on Renaissance that's been recreated a little while ago um, and then be able to snip it down um, and put it on like YouTube and stuff like that for new players starting so they can just search something right just for point of reference real quick right but like normally like like I was saying like I I would just you know macro up my character and actually have a competent character within you know a day or two or something like that like that's the thing too like other than taming and crafting skills skills build up relatively quick here um like even myself like you'll notice like i'm like normally what i would do too is and i would always suggest this um for any new player here you can have up to three accounts um with five characters on each account what i would suggest is especially like if you're going to start like a warrior character is run to oaklo get up as much cotton as you can like just build up cotton build up bandages and then you're just gonna fight your two characters against each other um and macro them up that way by healing one another right um and by doing that you're gonna build up your healing really fast you're gonna build up your uh fighting skills really fast and then you've got a competent dexer within you know a day or two or actually technically you've got two competent dexers within a day or two right so that would be my tip for like quick play and then on the side too you could even have one of those characters like macroing peacekeeping or something like that too right so you know you have a you have a uh, a peace dexer within a couple of days right i've just and that's the thing too with macroing it's just idle play right so you're still playing on whatever server or whatever else you're doing right playing some fortnite <laughs> it's funny though because the uo crowd isn't the fortnite crowd generally right <laughs> if anything the uo crowd is probably more like the PUBG crowd like the older the older kids <laughs> and myself like i was saying earlier i'm not a huge pvp -er myself but i have created pvp characters just to be part of the pvp system because i feel like the pvp system on this server is going to be a lot of fun because it's the old school um the old school factions you know lining up on the bridges and trying to take people out on bridge fights and stuff trying to take like bases out and stuff like that it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun um i've done a tiny bit of coverage like of town fights like group town fights and stuff like that but i haven't really covered too much of like the sigil stealing and stuff so that's something i would like to cover more uh, moving forward so i'm gonna have to probably join a character in myself and join up to the factions so may make sure people if you like to you know see gray screen and like to see someone die a lot make sure you join up to my uh my stream and become part of the spiritually initiated community because you're gonna see a lot of funny deaths with uh with my pvp play that's for sure <laughs> it's gonna be quite entertaining to say the least i am not a pvp -er at all <laughs> but it'll be entertaining i've got a uh i've got a dexer built and I've got a uh, parry heal mage. I figure the parry heal mage would be kind of fun for me to play because heals on you, right? I'm essentially almost just gonna kind of run around like as like 
a healer and just, you know, keep people healed up and, you know, just be a support player in factions, right? Pretty much. And then just hide behind my shield. I'll just wall up. <laughs> I've already got a stack of invulnerability shields saved up. <laughs> So again, folks, this is pretty, this is pretty like boring stuff, right? This is me just taking out some giant rats and stuff like that, um, you know, to show you the content, to kind of show, to have some snips and stuff like that, to show what to do in the future. Because these are things you're going to be doing once you're here and stuff like that, collecting money slowly and everything to buy up skills. Oh, he's like right on the door entrance there. Even what I'll probably do is I'll probably run back into town and grab a different weapon, too. Because this weapon is horrible. It's slow, and it does horrible damage. We gotta get, like... Usually, War Axe is my favorite starting weapon for, uh, for a Mason character. Oh, and one thing I always suggest, too, is for new players, make sure you are skinning everything. Um, leather, especially spined leather, sells really well on this server. So, like, even if you are not a young player and you have the ability to go to, like, a, like a non-new player dungeon, what I would suggest is, for any new player, go to somewhere like Despise and kill Lizardmen, because spined leather on this server sells for roughly, like, 25, I believe anywhere from 20 to 30 uh, gold pieces per piece. So, like, you can make some really quick money killing Lizardmen. Again, what we'll do is we'll do one of these. We'll buy a, a mace. And then what we'll do is we'll try and maybe cast a couple blade spirits to get a couple of uh, to get a couple of higher end monsters down to try and make some money here. Where's our war axe? Where's our war axe? Oh, there we go. Oh, it's relatively cheap compared to a lot of the other weapons too, so that's always nice. song is a good beat to it i like it um okay so now what we're gonna do is go back in um like i said what we'll do is we'll try and drop down to the lower level and just try and maybe cast a blade spirit or two i think i might be able to cast one probably i'll i might fail once or twice or something like that but i should be able to at least cast it <laughs> I forgot about my intelligence too. I got no intelligence either. <laughs> That's always fun to deal with. Uh, oh, he's taming stuff here? What's he taming? I don't want to start killing stuff that he's trying to tame here. Uh, yeah, let me just run away. <laughs> Alright. Let's try and get to a lower level here. Oh, I, do I even have enough mana for this? How much mana does Blade Spirit take? Oh, you know what I can do? Oh, little tip here. Completely forgot to buy one. Um, what you should pro one of the first items you should probably buy is the uh, 
the magical wizard hat because also too with the magical wizard hat you can also um i never know how to get out of this place i always get lost in here i never come in here uh with the magical wizard hat you can uh build up both meditation and um like have higher intelligence for casting higher level spells so that is one thing i would highly highly suggest purchasing right away and they're only 11 gold peach uh 11 gold pieces to purchase one of the magical wizard hats so i would highly suggest purchasing one of those when you first start here no that's not the right way And if you're still here, Stack, where do you play then? Are you an Outlands player? Oh, I think this is the way to go. Oh, no way. A rattlesnake. Go figure. That's a that's a rare tame. Like, that's something that you'd want to tame. Um, oh, go figure. Uh, how are we getting out of here? <laughs> Holy jump, and we're getting jumped by everything here. All right, give me a second here. Holy cripes. Holy cripes. Yeah, see, that's the thing, too, with this, like, with this dungeon as a non-new player. But being a new player, it's so much more difficult, right? Because everything's aggroing on you the whole time. Whereas normally, like as a new player, you wouldn't have to worry about that. You'd just be running around here and it's like, oh, I want to kill that. All right, attack that. <laughs> UF hybrid Outlands. Oh, so you, you're spread around quite a bit already then. <laughs> you're spread around quite a bit already then. Yeah, I've got characters on UOF and Outlands myself. Um, but this one's definitely like my, my, my go-to uh, shard for sure. Um, right, yeah, we wanted to get that wizard hat. And this is where you buy the wizard hat, so go over here and buy that. Hmm, that one never seems to work. All right. So there we go. We got a wizard hat now. Okay. We want to keep that one because that one's newbied. And then, again, what you could do is you could always set a macro. So even as you're just running around, the hat is being just put back onto your head. And if you notice, what that does is it knocks down your mana a little bit because it increases your intelligence, right? So you have to regenerate that five mana. So if you set a macro to continually replace the hat on your head, say every like seven, eight seconds or whatnot, um, and then, you know, lower it as uh, your meditation skill gets higher, you'll slowly build up your meditation skill in the background of whatever you're doing. And you can do that um, just like I said, in the background of you doing other skills and stuff like that too, right? So, again, what we'll do is we will retarget to this hat. We'll play it. And then all that's going to do is, like I was saying, it's just going to... Um, oh. No. Oh, that messed it up because now the hat thinks that I'm in. I forgot about that. Yeah, okay. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to record it right from the beginning because the hat, <laughs> the macro is trying to place my hat on someone else's head because it's got it uh, located to um, lo like location, which is someone else's head, right? All right, so all you have to do, like I said, was here, I'll show you again real quick. Hit the record button, okay? Lift up the hat, drop the hat on your head, stop the macro, okay? And then what you're going to want to do is come down to special constructs, insert a pause, insert for, like I said, say seven, seven seconds, which is 7,000 milliseconds. Okay. And then just start hitting play. So every seven seconds, that macro is going to lift up the hat, drop it back on your head. Um, and then that's going to just build up your meditation skill in the background um, as you're 
as you're playing through, right? So you can do that as you're building up your um, your mace fighting skills, any skills in the dungeon, as you're just running around, um, as you may be cleaning a poopy diaper in the house. Um, that can just be playing in the background to whatever you're doing, right? What I would probably suggest is though, um, I'm gonna be playing this while I'm just still playing. What I would suggest is if you are actually going to go like away from keyboard, set up something like an actual provoke macro with the hat in the provoke macro. So you're building up multiple skills at the same time. Um, like for an example, if you look at my, I believe my provoke macro, oh, this one doesn't have it, but normally my provoke macro would also have the um, meditation macro built into it. So then as I'm provoking the creatures, I'm also lifting up and dropping the hat. So I'm meditating as I'm provoking the creatures. So then you're building up three skills at the same time, right? Little helpful tip there. And what's your main server then, Stack? Where Where's kind of like your home? Like, where do you, like, like if you're just logging in on a Saturday morning and stuff like that, like, what's your, what's your go-to, like, server that you're going to log into? And do you find, like, do you find the PvP better on one um, or the other or whatnot? Because I know my buddy, he was, he, like, um, I've got a buddy in my guild, like a real life friend and stuff like that, who said he used to play on hybrid. Um, and he started playing here now because I guess hybrid has started kind of like weaning off and stuff like that. Not as much action there, I guess, as there used to be. Yeah, like I said, I apologize, folks, for just kind of some boring content and stuff like that this morning, but <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I created this video and then uh, be able to snip it up in the future and stuff like that to be able to create like a new YouTube video to be able to help some people out with uh, gameplay and stuff like that. I'll run around for a quick second here to hopefully give ourselves a second to heal up here that's the one thing like i said we don't have anatomy built up uh we don't have our healing built up all the way so it is very tricky for us to you know to get through the content right now because <coughs> like i said normally i would you know sit in town you know before i started running out and stuff macroing up characters building up basic skills but i just wanted to to start some gameplay show show some uh show some areas and stuff like that where you can start off and what you can kind of do you know helpful skills and everything like that too right is there a possible way i'm going to be able to provoke these two i don't think there's a possible way no i was gonna say, I was gonna say it's going to be so hard for me what do i have like 25 of each skill oh this is appropriate music for this though this is like kill music Yeah, it's going to be so hard for me to provoke stuff. All right, let's see if we can... Oh, no, we got to wait for our mana to go back up here now. Oh, let's... Wait for that, stop that. Oh, the other thing I would probably suggest too is, is buy like a horse, like as soon as you can too. Like, mounts are obviously really super helpful, right? So you'd want to buy a horse, like, as you know, as soon as possible. This harpy is way too quick. He's, like, right on my butt without this horse. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Get a horse, because, like, you running through dungeons and stuff like that, like, you're almost the same speed as a lot of these monsters. So it's really hard to try and, like, get away from them or break aggro or anything like that. So it's just really helpful to have a mount. Yo, F by default, sometimes hybrid outlands for pvp oh that's cool he actually had um i actually had I, I don't know if it's like the the developer like kind of who he is uh what is it uo uo forever 2 like really super nice guy oh i can't believe i cast that first try that's awesome 
Um, really super nice guy. Uh, he came in and checked out my my channel a little while ago. I was pretty surprised with that. I was I was pretty stoked. All right, get everything on that blade spirit. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. Get everything on that blade spirit. Take stuff down, blade spirit. Take stuff down. There we go. All right. <laughs> That's cheese ball tactics right there, folks. So as a new mage, blade spirit is probably one of the most useful skills in the game. Um, we're taking out some pretty high level stuff there, right? Um, that rat archer there is going to have like 300 gold. We got other uh, rat men there. Uh, we got the harpy there. All of those are going to have spined leather. So that's pretty helpful for starting out like on a new character. And like I said, I'm trying to keep this character like as like naturalist as I can. Um, I'm going to create like an actual naturalist character and play that character like true to naturalist form. Um, no help from any of my other characters whatsoever. Um, like staying outside of town, like stuff like that, right? Like even in a lot of cases, I'm gonna even try and like use like a uh, like a like a uh, a campsite and stuff like that, and I actually like set up a camp with a bed roll. Try and like log out outside of town, like until I can afford like a house and stuff like that. Like I'm gonna play that character like true to form naturalist. Should be pretty fun. All right, so that was pretty that was pretty worthwhile, folks. We got a Ratman archer down. We got uh, we got the harpy down, so that was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. We just got to go in and loot some stuff now. Yeah, that was pretty good. All right, let's try and maybe drop another one of those in there, shall we? All right. Obviously, we have to get away here for a quick second. We'll try and drop one further up here and see if we can take out some more rat men with with another one there watch i'll just fizzle this time though i won't have as much luck as i did that first time right oh yeah <laughs> the hot smell of fizzle right um okay so let's get the spined leather off this guy So like I was saying, the spined leather sells for a lot. Um, we probably won't get too much of a chance to really sell it on this character. Because um, usually people will only buy it if like you have a bulk amount. But even still, that's fine. Ooh, I got something tanking for me here. Maybe I'll run in and try and kill this stuff while that, while that giant toad is tanking it. giant toads after me though I just want to kill that lizard man <laughs> everything's too fast for me in here <laughs> how much gold do I have now fire uh, probably save up a bit more to get a horse I don't want to spend everything on a horse I don't need one that bad I almost feel like probably for someone that isn't young though um like i was saying earlier you probably really wouldn't want to be in that dungeon maybe i'd probably go to like maybe like shame or despise or something like that um you'd probably be able to make more money quicker there than in that dungeon unless you went to one of the specialized areas or something like that just for point of reference because there are specialized area that actually have like decent like decent spawn rates with decent monsters and stuff We'll just throw that in here for now. We'll sell it after. All right. 
And then, like I was saying too, um, you also have the option of doing uh, peacemaking as a bard skill to start the game. Um, that one's a little bit easier to macro up because you can macro that up just by uh, repeating the peacemaking skill by targeting your own character and trying to do an AoE piece. Um, but on that note, peacemaking on this shard is it's garbage. I'll be totally honest. It's it's garbage. Um, the only thing it's really viable for is like a lower level Dexer, um, taking out like lower level mobs and stuff, because even the higher level mobs will break peace once you've done, you know, a decent amount of damage to them. So there really isn't a point of taking peacemaking in my opinion on this shard, um, unless you're doing like just a, you know, a, a lower level, uh, peace Dexer or something like that. Like I have one and I barely ever play it because it's just it's not viable you might as well take provoke 90% of the time in my opinion oh and of course that giant toad died so now we don't have a tank here all righty and then let's run back in here. I just want to kill this lizard, man. And of course we get poisoned by the slime. Yeah, it's not even worth it to try and take him out. Okay, you know what? We're going to go to a completely different area here. It's just annoying there. So this is the... This is one of the specialized areas I'm going to go to over here. Um, this is the brigand area. I figure this will probably be a better area. If I get a couple of uh, blade spirits off there. We're in the money. So we'll shoot off a couple of blade spirits down here. Oh, and just for a heads up too, um, I just wanted to say thank you for viewing, folks. Um, I know this is kind of more boring content and stuff like that compared to a lot of the other stuff I do and everything. Um, but, you know, like I said, I wanted to create this video. Um, I knew I had to, you know, come live with some content this morning so i just wanted to make sure that i got this stuff done um in terms of creating like a kind of a new player video for ultima online renaissance just showcasing some of the newer areas on uh on oklo island and stuff like that right so if we come down here there's an undead sailor there but there's too much other stuff and like garbage around here that i don't want to have to deal with And down here, if you're not running on one of the paths, like, oh, or if you run out of stamina, um, you start walking. <laughs> it's always fun to deal with. <coughs> oh, and we got a brigand camp right there, too. Wow, we're just not running into, like, luck today, like, at all. Like, come on. Seriously? <laughs> Holy cripes. I always forget how painful it can be to be a newbie at times. <laughs> it's normally, oh, just drink a refresh potion. All right, we're back at full. All right, we're good to go. Let's roll. All right, let's create some food here, I guess. Hey, Leaf, how are you today? How goes your week? How was your weekend? <laughs> Hopefully it went well. Our weekend was really good here. We had really nice weather in Canada here. It was beautiful. That's one thing. We've been getting really, really lucky in terms of like really nice weather. Uh, really early in Canada this year. It's it's really nice. 
normally we don't have this nice of weather this early, but like mid April and like my girlfriend and I are out, outside already, like doing gardening and stuff like that. Like that's unheard of in Canada here for this time of the year. All right. So we're going to try and drop a blade spirit into these brigands here and try and see what we can muster up here. If we can pull off a blade spirit cast here, like we're in the money. Like I said, like we're doing really well with, uh, with money there. If we can pull that off because they're really good money. And of course it would fizzle. <laughs> Do you play Ultima Online, Alif? Or are you just checking out the content for the first time? This is such a fun game, Alif. I love this uh, MMO. This is like the great grandfather of all MMOs for point of reference. This is such a cool old school MMO. This is what started, you know, Ultima Online, or this is what started World of Warcraft and, you know, EverQuest and started all those uh different um mmos oh yeah we got a cast off all right we're in the money here folks we are in the money here brigands on a <clears throat> on a blade spirit Ooh, ooh, ooh! watch them burn watch them burn burn baby burn That's the great thing about uh, starting off a character with Majory. Just for point of reference, Majory in this game, in my opinion, is the most, is the single most useful skill in the game. Um, Majory paired with any other skill is going to be more viable. Um, Majory, Meditation, whatever combination of, of Majory, it's just Majory is the most viable skill in the game. Like, look at what I'm able to do as, like, a brand new character. Like, I'm taking out entire groups of characters just by casting, like, a really cheeseball spell. <laughs> Which obviously is awesome, right? Because, like I said, like, I'm going to make pretty decent money off that one Blade Spirit cast. So, I mean, that's that's really cool. And like I was saying, um, for anyone joining up to Ultima Online Renaissance that wants a hand getting started or anything like that, um, virtually anything, let me know. Um, I'm going to drop the the server link here and stuff like that. Um, for anyone that wants to check out the, the game, the server, anything, click on the link. Um, that'll bring you to the website and stuff like that. You can see the information on the server and everything. Um, and then also, too, like I was saying, if you need a hand getting started, if you have any questions or anything like that, um, feel free to join up to the Spiritually Initiated Discord server. Um, there's always really good information being thrown around um, on my Discord, you know, both regarding... Um, uh, like streaming regarding uh ultima online content there's just cool stuff there let's check it out if you like folks all right let's see if we can get a another cast here maybe oh yeah there we go there we go buddy there we go we're off to the races there eh? <laughs> a little bit of canadian coming out there for y'all <laughs> oh, we're about to get some. We're about to get some gold there, eh? How are we gonna get it some gold? <laughs> My girlfriend always makes fun of me because if I stay in Canadian mode too long, it all of a sudden starts turning into this like just weird gibberish, like half Irish, half nonsense <laughs> type of accent, <laughs> and she's forever making fun of me for it. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not even a real Canadian. <laughs> We're going to steal a whole brigand outfit because I really want to dress as a brigand right now. I just feel like dressing as a brigand. So we're going to take the whole outfit and we're just going to dress up as a brigand because I think that's kind of, kind of neat to dress up as a pirate. <laughs> oh, we got to keep, I, I forgot. We got to keep the, uh, yeah, we got to keep the, uh the hat on because we need that to cast the blade spirits for our, our overpowered leetness here look at this decent gold here eh 200 look at this bad boy over here it's too much on the ground for me to control shift um so for just point of reference folks you can control shift 
um, on your keyboard, which is going to bring up all the items on the ground that technically you can interact with. Um, some of the items are going to be like locked down. Like for an example, that rib cage is a stationary static item. I can't interact with it. Um, but you can at least see corpses that way. Um, different things like that, right? I think I might just go like majory kind of like it off, like off the start here. It almost kind of makes more sense for me to do that because I can probably do more majory based than I can almost like macing based because of a lack of skill. But we'll try it. We'll try it here. We'll kind of do it like a hybrid, hybrid thing here. Actually, poison is like really super helpful. Poison is one of the best damage uh, per cast spells in the game, in my opinion. That's one thing. I got to build up my meditation more so that I can actually like cast spells one after another. I can't cast spells quick enough with this build right now. Oh, and the other thing too is I apologize everyone um, if uh, if I'm not responding right away. My analytics in a lot of cases seems to be a little bit messed up right now. Like I don't see viewer counts or anything. Um, so bear with me. Um, if, I, if you ask a question, uh, bear with me for a couple of seconds at least because it might be slightly delayed. So just for a heads up there on that. Come on, go down. Go down. I want your gold. I want your gold. Yeah, I see like 700 gold already, folks. Like that's not bad, eh? Compared to like what we were making off like the little the little rats and stuff like that, right? If you get going with Blade Spirit on a character with brand new Majory, um, Blade Spirit is like the best bang for buck spell in the game, in my opinion, for like a newer character. Because you can take out some really high level stuff with a couple of Blade Spirits. Like, if you want to, you can even jump into, like, some endgame uh, content once you have, like, enough intelligence built up that you could cast a couple of Blade Spirits in a row. So, like, that's that's pretty powerful. Like, you you could take out, like, dragons and stuff like that with, uh, with Blade Spirits because they won't uh, dispel them. All right, I'm not going to be able to take him out with just... Won't you just die already? Holy cripes. What other spell do I have here? Harm. Really? He does more damage to me? Well, that's perfect. see if we're gonna die here this guy's at like zero life and i can't meditate or do anything right now i feel so helpless on this new character <laughs> well at least my intelligence is going up <laughs> That's always helpful. Oh, also too, what you'd probably want to do is, uh, I, I see this in a lot of cases, like people asking about this. Um, under general, what you want to do is just scroll like almost down to the, almost, well, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom, but it's not at the bottom. Inform when skill changes. Right now it's set to one. Pull that all the way down to zero. And what that will do is it will inform you when your skill changes by a point. Uh, point because right now it's essentially set to only inform you when it changes by an entire like skill point which isn't really helpful right because um, you don't gain by entire points at a time you gain by percentages of a point at a time so now if you notice it's showing me every time i gain even point one um, so again what you do is you go into options general scroll all the way down to the bottom and then slide the bar down to the left so that the meter actually reads zero and then that will show you whenever you gain even a small small uh, point of skill right and that's really important especially early in the game because it'll show you all your skill going all your skill gains and actually let you you know, keep up with what's going on and stuff on your character, right? 
I'm just trying to heal up a little bit here so I can actually get back into the action here. I feel like a, a noob on this character, like so bad. And if anything, we might as well cut up some clothes here for... Oh my lordy. Holy jumping he aggroed me far away. Alright, we're just going to run like further away here. Okay. Yeah, then we'll aggro some gazers while we're at it too. That's something I do not want to deal with at all. It's always helpful to have free bandages, right? <laughs> Especially when you're new in the game. Especially when you're new in the game. So what we're going to do here is we're going to aggro both of them. We're going to kind of pull them off into an area here. And then hopefully get some other stuff aggroed onto them here as well. This is kind of delicate stuff here. Because <laughs> like if this blade spirit taps on me, I'm done. Oh, and of course there's a mage there to dispel it. Perfect. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. All right, so whatever. At least we can go in and get that executioner's body now. That's what we were mainly trying to go for. Because that has, yeah, 600 gold on it. Plus some armor, some items. So, all right, let's get out of here. Because we're going to probably get attacked again. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to aggro it again and die. <laughs> so let's get out of here. <laughs> Run! Newbie butt, run! <laughs> That's what I should have named him, newbie butt. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh lordy. <laughs> newbie butt, run! <laughs> Alright. So that was pretty profitable there. We made 1,200 gold there um, just doing that little stuff. Okay, so that's definitely the way, um, like, if, if you're a mage type of character, if you don't mind doing some kind of hairier play stuff like that, um, Blade Spirit is, like, easily one of the best ways to start out in the game, um, but you don't start with a Blade Spirit spell, so you'd have to find a Blade Spirit scroll and then add it to your spell book, right? Um, most people will give you one if they have one, or they'll, you know, if they'll find one, they'll, they'll buy it for you or whatnot. Um, so don't worry about that too much, but that's a, a really, really super lucrative way to start out on uh, Renaissance, obviously, right? Is by just blade spiriting uh, mid-level creatures, um, mainly the brigands, right? Like even another area I will show you is... Now that we've got some stuff going on here... Um... I'll show you a different area as well. I just want to dress in this this outfit here. This is our new outfit. <laughs> okay, so I'll show you a different area as well. Um, I shouldn't have those in my my main bag actually, or in my secondary bag. Here I am talking about newbie items, and I've got newbie items in my uh, sub bag. Okay, so now what we're gonna go is I'm gonna show you the. Um, I'm going to show you the actual brigand camp where you could go with your new character and fight brigands. It's not in the dungeon. Um, it's a little bit outside the dungeon. So I'll show you that area. I'm just pulling these up real quick so I don't run out of reagents while I'm out of town. So that's what I was talking about earlier too. This little bar here, all you have to do is uh, go into options, 
go to counters, then you can set up all your bar options here for this hot bar here. I usually just use a row of 15. I find usually 15 is enough to keep me going. Um, some people have multiple rows keeping track of like a whole bunch of different things. So, I mean, it's totally up to you what you want to keep track of, right? Oh, I forgot I don't want to use that because that'll keep me from meditating. Oh, and also, too, if you notice, what you can do, too, is um, you can also use this trick to heal as well. Um, so what you would essentially do is um, you would kind of do the opposite of what we're doing in terms of having the hat on. So what you would do is you would macro it so the hat is in your bag. You put the hat on and then take that off. What that'll do is it'll drop you down five health so you can heal that back up. And then uh, through macroing that over time, you can build up your healing, right? Because it'll always give you, what I'm saying is it'll always give you essentially five damage to heal. And you can always attempt to heal that five damage up over time. So you can macro up healing in town too if you want to. Which obviously is very helpful, right? And these are all good tips if you're, uh, you know, away from keyboard or something like that. Or maybe taking a quick break from the computer and you want to build up skills while you're not necessarily um, actively Sorry, playing, right? I'm not sure. Hey computer, shut up. Hey Alexa, hey computer, let's play a game. Hey computer, let's play a game. Okay, games. Here's one called Harry Potter fan game. I love Do this you one. Want to try that one. Yes. Or you can ask for more options. Play Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <sighs> Here are a few popular ones. All right. Do you want to try Harry Potter trivia? Yes. It's rated 3.4 stars by 26 people. Yes, play it. Or you can ask for more options. Play, yes, yes. Yes, play. Yes, yes. Here are a few popular ones. You must be kidding me. Shut yes up. No? It is one of the Shelly, most shut up. This week. Shelly, shut up. Shut up, Shelly. All right, so we're just running north to the brigand camp here. Um, has anyone seen uh, the uh, the Mad TV that that's from? You're killing me here, Shelly. You're killing me, Shelly. Or is it Shannon? No, it's is it Shannon? I can't remember now if it's Shannon or Shelly. You're killing me, Shelly. <laughs> You're killing me, Shelly. I'm on a diet. You're bringing me chicken carbonara. How dare you, Shelly? How dare you? All right, so we're going to try and drop this, like, into the fort here. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> there was way too much at the door there to try that trick. Um, okay, so this is... Oh, well, now we just lost all our stuff, and we're not going to get it back, because we're just going to get res killed every two seconds here, because we're not a new player. I forgot about that. Yeah, maybe that isn't the best spot to go as, like, a non-new player, but being a new player... Because it's so, like, tight in there. At least in the dungeon, you have room to, like, kind of run around and play with, like, you know, the room and stuff like that. Because um, I'm never going to get my stuff back now. Oh, great. You know what? Maybe I can. Yeah, run these all out. Here we go. Here's some tricky maneuver stuff, folks. Here's some tricky maneuver stuff. All right, we'll pull the brigands out. They're occupied out here now. And see how much easier this would be if I had like an actual... Um... Ah, oh, if I had a mount, that would be so much easier. You know what? Did I remember to put the gold in my bank account? I really hope I did. Um, I'm going to go buy an actual horse because this is like painful without a horse. Like you're so slow without a horse compared to them. All right. So we're going to go buy a horse here at least. Oh, and we're going to aggro this whole camp while we're at it. Might as well, right? Ah, uh, the unforgiving world of Ultima Online is a newbie. <laughs> Hopefully, people are having fun watching me die now. <laughs> I 
Oh, one thing I might do too is I might try and mark myself maybe a ruin for in town. So I don't have to run around like a chicken with my head cut off whenever I die. Tony Stark, the man in red. All right. So with this here, horses on Ultima Online Renaissance are roughly 550 gold pieces. Highly recommend getting one pretty much as soon as you can. Um, I was trying to hold off there for a little bit, but on this note, we're going to grab one. It just makes everything so much easier um, in terms of um, in terms of getting away and escaping from the different creatures and stuff like that. You can kind of run and kite and stuff like that without having to worry about them as much. And as I was saying earlier, coming to the like the Oaklo cotton fields here is, I mean, it's night and day different between uh, being a young player and a non-young player. Like you're watching some pretty painful gameplay here because I'm not a young player playing a young player. <laughs> oh, I have no chance to tame that creature. All right. And I didn't bank the 1,200 gold there. So there's still 1,200 gold sitting on my corpse up top there. Awesome. 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 So on that note, folks, don't be a newbie like me. And don't run into the next area without banking your gold from the last area. Kind of a helpful tip there, folks. Kind of a helpful tip there. But us having a horse will probably make it quite a bit easier now. And what I'm going to do too is I'm actually going to grab uh, some of those newbie bandages as well because that should help out as well. All right, and then go back there, try and get our stuff back here. Chances are I'll probably just die and then the horse will die, but whatever. And then we'll just lose our 550 gold pieces, right? But that's okay. Yeah, now at least I'm much quicker, so at least I can get away from them at a decent speed. I can actually run away from them now. Whereas before, you're almost running at the same speed as creatures in the game if you don't have a horse. So it can be pretty painful at times to try and like aggro stuff and kite and everything like that. <laughs> yeah they're like right at the door there oh well at least i can like i was saying at least i can do this now and like kite some stuff away like competently and actually be able to get to the door before they get there again because that was a problem last time they were almost at the door by the time i got there right because now i can just like turn around and just like tie hide tail and run actually you know what i'll get them dropped on these tameables here yeah there we go there we go those will aggro there and then I can run back in here see now I'm at least fast enough where I can get back to the like this base here before they hit there like right away right 
Like, they were so fast last time that I couldn't even do this. And then get this one out by itself, too. stuff back here or at least as much as we can all right should be able to get everything here yeah see the horse makes it so much easier right like i can just run away from them no problem now okay cool so we're all good there we got all our stuff back we got our um we got our regents back that was the main thing i wanted to get back obviously right Ugh, without those we can't even cast blade spirit or anything and the other thing too is we wanted to get back our our wizard hat so then we can actually cast the blade spirit because we have enough intelligence now right the other part too is having a horse is going to make it a lot easier too because with the horse um we can kind of like run in cast blade spirit run out really quick whereas without the horse it was really tricky to run in and then run out with casting blade spirit because even if the blade spirit dropped on us i don't know if you noticed but i was almost the same speed as the blade spirit even so like things like that was even really crazy hairy because <laughs> if you're the same speed as your blade spirit like you are in big trouble <laughs> if you can't get away from your blade spirit oh boy watch out <laughs> There. we're just kind of like running around here just trying to keep stuff going here um, and then as stuff kind of drops up there we'll run back up and then loot it so this is some pretty like this is some pretty like cheese ball tactic stuff but it's 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 good though like i mean it works right <laughs> it works get you decent money early in the game too instead of having to fight rats for like you know 10 gold pieces a piece right Might as well actually pull up the meditation skill here, I guess. Oh, that one fizzled. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take out the two on the side of the building here. Because I can drop it on them and probably take out, like... Yeah, I'm going to start, like, pulling them out a little bit. Because the blade spirits drop too quick if you drop them inside the base. And then you don't get enough out of the actual spell itself. That's one thing, Blade Spirit takes so long to cast because it is such a, a low level powerful spell that it takes a really long time to cast it. That's kind of the, the breaking point of it. It's kind of the rub of having a spell that good, that low level. Yeah, like here, I'm gonna, yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna get hit before I cast it here. But hey, if it works, it works, right? Oh, oh, except it doesn't work half the times. <laughs> my R my RNG numbers are not working with me today. Really? One of you came? <laughs> Holy cripes. Oh, and of course we're going to... <laughs> holy jumping <laughs> so unforgiving is the life of a newbie without the young player status holy cripes look, look at this i've just got stuff all over the place to aggro me i can't run anywhere for a split second here to just like peace off and and heal up and hide and meditate and <laughs> Oh, that 
that's a thing. My newbie bandages got piled with another pile there. I just noticed that. There we go. Finally. Holy jumping. Finally. Yeah, see, it's such a powerful spell, this low level in the game, um, in terms of, like, you know, being able to kite stuff away from everything, um, and then being ab actually able to utilize all the damage from it, right? Like, even we'll try and aggro a couple more out here and try and drag them onto it here, because now that we're going kind of smaller groups, it should take out a decent amount of them here. And without Provoke, it's kind of tricky because a Blade Spirit is a mindless spell. It, it You can't control it. So it's best to kind of just drag stuff towards it and then, like, run away so that the, the stuff aggros the Blade Spirit, if you notice what I'm doing here. And then once it's here, you kind of just run away, and then that'll aggro the Blade Spirit because that'll be its closest target. And then it'll just, like I said, it'll just mindlessly take out targets here for me. And very efficiently, too. Like, if you notice, like, it's doing a decent amount of damage for, like, for the one spell that I've cast on it, right? Well, now it's aggroed me, so I gotta run away here for a quick second. But yeah, like, that was some decent money there that we just made from that. Like, that was another 400 gold that we just made there. Oh, even more, 500. Yeah, 500 gold. And like I said, all it is is kind of cheese ball tactics, right? Just running in, dropping a blade spirit, running out. But it works. <laughs> and it works very well, too, if you notice. Very well. So again, we'll try and separate some stuff here a little bit. Maybe do two different groups here for the brigands. Maybe not. And then we can run in while well, everything's aggroed on this one here. We can run in and loot this corpse here. And then loot this one. Because while the stuff is aggroed, we can actually loot the stuff. Whereas if that blade spirit isn't holding aggro, we probably won't be able to loot the stuff it gets pretty hairy up there pretty quick right as you saw last time like as soon as they all aggro me you're done for right i don't have the the health to be able to survive like five different guys attacking me all at once all right so what we're going to do is real quick we're going to go back and bank this money real quick we're going to go buy some more uh reagents real quick so then we can keep uh, keep the blade spirits going because this is definitely the one of the easier ways to make money at this point. What is that? Anything good in there? A refresh potion? I'll take a refresh potion. that's not bad like 2k money for a brand new character is pretty good money right and like i was saying like even if you really wanted to like if you were a little bit riskier you could probably run into um some different dungeons take out some different creatures um and probably make even more money realistically i mean you might want to train up your mageria a little bit more 
um, to be casting Blade Spirit and stuff like that. If you notice, like I'm I'm failing my Blade Spirit casts a lot. Um, and if we didn't have an area where we could kind of like piece up, like like peel off and you know kite stuff around, it'd get pretty hairy pretty quick, right? Grabbing new aggro from new creatures and everything like that too. Um, Oh, and that green gate there is for the event center. Um, that's where you'll meet for uh, any different events, player run events or anything like that going on in the game. some reagents all right and then let's get back to it shall we kind of having fun as like a like a player you know not just macroing up characters not having like top level skills and stuff like that it's so for point of reference yesterday uh we have what are called hard mode hunts in ultima online renaissance which is a player run uh event um, generally done on Sunday afternoons. Super, super fun event. Um, probably one of the most fun times I've had on Ultima Online in quite some time. Um, it's essentially you acting as like a brand new character, not getting any um, any uh, like gear or anything like that. You can you can use an established character, but you can't use any established gear or anything. And then as you go and adventure through the Outlands, um, you just pick stuff up over time right and it was really neat to see um how different people handle different situations and stuff like that right um very interesting it was it was a really neat dynamic i haven't played ultima online like that in a while so that's why i'm kind of doing this today too now that i'm kind of on that like mindset like the new the new player mindset like different ways to take out different things right because different different builds and different uh skill sets have to take things out differently right like what might work for one person isn't going to work for another person, right? So you have to kind of like work alongside your own skill set and kind of figure out how to take things out, right? Like kind of how what I'm doing right now. It's kind of neat. Like I said, like normally in a situation like this, like I would just summon a demon and just have the demon walk in. It would aggro everything and then I'd just be dropping blade spirits on everything else, right? Whereas I can't do that with this character. I have to like think of like different ways that this is going to work, right? Man, oh man, that guy is quick. Like I always, one thing I always say, I always forget how long blade spirit takes to cast. Then drag him into the blade spirit here. I just want to make sure I looted all these guys over here. Too. Oh, as they all just disappear. <laughs> That's okay. So I'll try and maybe get some aggro in these guys here and get a couple to maybe drop down with me.
trying to get multiples going at a time here, right? To try and like pretty much clear out the camp if I can. Slowly taking out this camp here. Slowly taking it out here. Nope. No such luck. I got that hotkey. I forgot I had that hotkey. At least I can cancel out my spells. So also to um, with the server or with the shard, um, the easiest way to cancel a spell cast is just by equipping something. Um, so in case you need to cancel out a blade spirit cast, which is like a four minute cast time, um, and not get hit by whatever's chasing you, uh, you can always just equip something really quick, and that will um, allow you to continue running again because that will cancel your spell cast. So. Very helpful tip that way. And of course I would cancel or fizzle that out. So I get the blade spirit to come down with me then because it will aggro me. Whereas if I leave it up to that pirate, the blade spirit's just going to sit there like on top of the pirate, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. Yeah, like I was saying, like you can kind of like work alongside the the aggro of the blade spirit itself if you kind of like are willing to risk it a little bit. Um, it can get hairy at times, but if you use the aggro of the blade spirit to your benefit, you can you know kind of almost control things with it. Like if you notice, I'm kind of like just bouncing it around different things, and I mean that will work, right? Like again, like just run it out here. Oh, did it dispel? Oh yeah, I think it just dispelled. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and then again, just that last kill there, right? Because even if just the poison affects it too, I'll probably get a kill from that. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, so that wasn't too bad. And like I was saying, the thing you, uh, the thing with Blade Spirit is though, you want to focus on the non-casters, obviously, right? Um, if you're trying to take out casters with Blade Spirit, it's just it's not going to work because they're going to be dispelling the whole time. Um, so if you focus on Blade Spirit, on brigands, um, things like Earth Elementals, stuff like that, you'll make pretty good money with Blade Spirit casting.
free bandages. Looks like I already looted this one here. Yeah. I can't dispel it, so now I just have to kind of wait for that blade spirit to, to disappear. Because there's nothing else for it to aggro on, right? So I can't even drag it around anywhere. I'm almost going too fast, I think, for this. This is a fun outfit. I don't know why I'm even trying this, but <laughs> I was going to say it's going to aggro me for sure. Oh, well, we'll just drag it away here. Let it aggro something else, right? I don't think there's any, like I said, I don't think there's anything else for it to aggro here. Maybe south? Was there a camp south? It's probably going to disappear before I get it anywhere, though. So yeah, that's not bad. 1,100 gold from that little that little adventure there, right? And like I was saying, like you could do that with virtually any brand new character um, with 50 Majory. So that's by far your quickest way to get started out. Um, and then once you actually start to get into macroing um, through Provoke and stuff like that, that's when you can really, really start making some decent money um, on a Provoke, provoke Mage. Because essentially you're going to be provoking the creatures onto one another. They're going to be damaging one another. And then you're going to be throwing the blade spirits down on top of them. Um, and then dealing additional damage with the blade spirits as well. Which is obviously very, very helpful and quick. Um, but yeah, like in that short amount of time, we already made 2,600 gold, right? Like that's, that's not bad. Plus the 500 we spent on um, the horse too. So I mean, in a couple, like in what? I think we've been playing for roughly two hours. We've got a somewhat established character with some with some different skills, um, provoke, musicianship, healing, uh, mace fighting, like all that type of stuff and everything. Um, and then we've got, you know, enough reagents to, to continue battling. Um, you know, we've got our, our wizard's hat to build up our meditation and stuff like that. Um, so in terms of like you know starting up on the the shard it's a relatively easy shard to start up on um even if i want to what i can do now is i can take all kind of this stuff here um and I, I can even go to the provisioner and the armor and start selling some of the stuff that i had uh i had acquired i think that was a magic one yeah i'll probably keep that one because that'll be my new weapon that i actually use the old bank uh, might as well keep it on me um but everything else i'll sell off now because i've played on certain shards where you can't sell um items to the vendors but on this one you can so sell it up right might as well sell everything you can um make some money back that way right so and again like with creatures dry loot them right um, dry loot creatures, make sure that you are skinning all the creatures you can because leather sells very well, spined leather sells very well and for a really good price. Um, like for an example, like, like just to show you real quick here. Um, so even the spined leather here, we've only got 28 spined leather on this server. That'd be worth, what would that be worth here? Calculator bring this up here what is that worth 28 times 28 times 25 so that's another 700 gold right there just in the leather right um because the leather sells for roughly 25 25 gold pieces per piece of leather um for the spined leather here so that even there is 700 gold um and that was literally just from a couple of quick quick um ratmen I don't even think we were focusing on the rat men. That was just what we happened to pick up um, from what we killed, right? 28 pieces of leather, 700 gold on the shard, right? So 
I mean, even little things like that, it adds up quick. Like again, already over 3000 gold, um, well established with, you know, a decent amount of bandages. Uh, well, not really a decent amount. We've got, you know, a starter amount of bandages enough to at least, you know, adventure with considering how much I use them. Right. Um, but a pretty decent established character within, you know, like I said, two hours and imagine what you would do, you know, in the course of a night, um, in the course of a play session, however long and stuff like that yourself too. Right. Um, and that is like I was saying with, uh, pretty much starting the character with 50, uh, I believe it, what did we start the character with? I believe it was 50 Majory and 50 Provoke, which I'll be honest, probably going back, I probably wouldn't have started with the Provoke itself. Um, oh no, what did we, was it? Oh, I think it was Mace Fighting. Yeah, Mace Fighting. So yeah, if anything, maybe what I would start off with is maybe, actually, I don't know, Mace Fighting, that's probably not bad because then we could do some decent, I don't know. The Majory, pick Majory on any character to start off though, because Majory on any character um, just gets you so much viability in terms of, um, uh, it's it's just so, it's so easy to, to do so many different things with Majory. Um, recall, heal, cure, um, deal damage, um, you know, help other players out. So start off with 50 Majory and then whatever 50 skills you want. Um, I always suggest starting off with healing though, so you get your noobified scissors. You only have to put a couple of skill points into that, but again, that's kind of up to you um, based on how you want to play the character. And then from there, you know, you can play however you, you want. And this is more or less just a character to get up some startup funds because um, I never suggest maybe starting like a, uh, like a tamer as like your first character because generally they need quite a bit of money to start up and stuff like that, um, you know things like that right but you got your character within a couple hours you got a couple of you know a couple of thousand gold within a couple hours um and then you know enough to keep the character going in terms of um uh resources and stuff like that right so i mean it's relatively easy, easy to start up again i just wanted to do this video um to be able to snip it down in the future um to showcase how to get started on Ultima Online Renaissance, um, different ways uh, that you can acquire, you know, cotton, both through the new player system on Oklo or in Scarab Ray, um, if you're not a new player, and then different areas you can go to to build up your skills too, right? The new player dungeon, um, the brigand camp, uh, at the other side of Oklo, uh, different options. There's a lot available. And like I was saying, there doesn't seem to be any content about Oklo Island um, on YouTube or anything. So I just wanted to, to throw some of that stuff up there in case anyone's wondering how to get started on Ultima Online Renaissance. And again, for anyone watching here, um, thank you for, for tuning in today because I understand this can be a little bit more boring than some of the other content. Um, but, you know, it's really educational. It's probably maybe even some tips maybe even some stuff like veterans you know might not have known like even one thing um that's really super helpful is the uh here it is down here um control for bars the drag the drag to select for bars a lot of people don't seem to know about this but this is probably one of the most useful things in ultima online um with the classic client so say you're in a dungeon or something like that and uh say like maybe this person here and this person here is actually on your team and everyone else here is like a mob or something like that what you can do is you can the way i've got it set up is you go into options again general scroll down to pretty much at the bottom here um, enable drag select to open health bars and what that will allow you to do is this boom all those health bars are instantaneously pulled up on the screen but if you notice uh it'll keep the hot bars that you've already got selected pulled aside so if you have party members or whatnot, and say um, your party members are in a group with mobs and stuff like that, what you can do is you can drag select the mob group. It's gonna pull up the hot bars for the hot bars you don't already have pulled up. Throw them up on screen as you see here, and then all your hot bars that you already have pulled up are already gonna be in the area you have them pulled. So it's a really super helpful little tip um, for anyone that doesn't know about that. Uh, and again, it's just easier to be able to you know, drag and select hot bars like that instead of having to control and shift and having to select individual hot bars sometimes like that, right? So, little tip there. 
And if you're wondering, um, with the new uh, Ultima Online Classic client, if in which case you put the bars together and they become locked together, you can't just right click to get rid of them. Alt, that's gonna put up a release button and then you can right click them, okay? That will close them down. That's only for bars that are put together, okay? But again, that gives you, you know, a little bit of a heads up to be able to close down bars that might be on screen that are locked together. Because again, right, these two are going to be locked together. Can't get rid of them. Uh-oh. Right click, and then you're back to it. All right. Um, on that note, I'm going to take a bit of a break here, folks. Um, I might actually be able to come back a little bit later today. Uh, as I was saying, the little guy's with his dad today. Um, but... Thank you again, everyone, for watching. Um, I always have so much fun on stream with everyone here and stuff like that. Uh, but thank you for watching the slower content today. Um, I will be putting this content on YouTube, um, all snipped up and stuff like that properly and everything, hopefully moving forward. So then people can watch and hopefully learn how to um, potentially progress through um, Ultima Online Renaissance and the new player program that way. Um, I'm not part of it, unfortunately, but if you're part of it, it's... Uh, it's a great program to take advantage of if you join up to Ultima Online Renaissance. So join up, have some fun. And on those notes there, I'm going to drop the server info again, just in case anyone wants to play. And also the Discord, um, just in case anyone wants to check out any Discord information, uh, check out the spiritually initiated community or anything like that. Um, always really good Ultima Online tips in there as well. Um, if you're ever looking for a group to group, group up with on Ultima Online, um, or you're just looking for some helpful tips and stuff, join up. It's a lot of fun there, right? Um, but again, on that note, um, I'm going to send everyone out with the healing potion, of course, right? <laughs> Stay healed up, everyone. Um, and again, uh, thank you. Okay, so the other day I had uh, Sensei Cham follow. Thank you for that. I believe that was a follow from... Uh, from uh, the Scottish Aussies channel, which always appreciate that. <laughs> and also to Beyond Zero. Um, and then we got Comric today, who is now part of the Spiritually Initiated. And ZJC90. Always appreciate it, guys. Always appreciate it. Hopefully you uh, check me out in the future. And of course, if I'm hunting, I know I've had some, uh, some people from UOR uh, add me up and stuff like that. I'm sure they're trying to stream snipe me and stuff, so... I'm cool with that too. I'm pretty easy going with my loot and stuff like that in the game. Um, so if you want to come and stream snipe me and have some fun that way too, by all means, come and find one of my tamers and, and try your luck, right? Maybe my flame breath will be a little bit slow that day and you'll you'll get away. You'll probably win because I'm not much of a PvPer anyways. <laughs> but again, everyone, have yourselves a great day. Um, enjoy. I will hopefully see you guys a little bit later. And peace out. All the best, everyone. Um, and on that, what we're going to do too is we're going to raid. Of course, we're going to raid out. We always raid out here. Um, so let's pick someone to raid out to. Again, all the best, everyone. Thank you so much for viewing today. Thank you so much for having fun. And see you in the future, everyone. All the best. Peace.